I don't have the strength she has. I don't know how she does it. I work about 70 hours a week uh, currently and travel. I couldn't have been a single parent and running a major business and then get diabetes on top of it. My name is Carol Curran. Uh, I'm an Indianapolis native. Went to Tech High School, went to IU. Um, lived here all my life. I started out in nursing and decided after about a year that it was not going to pay me very well at that time. So I switched over to business and finance. I ended up with um, working in the staffing industry in the beginning. I was a criminal court reporter before that. Being a single parent with three kids that I couldn't be sequestered with juries as frequently as I was. So I moved over to the uh, staffing industry and went to work for a company called Kelly Services. And the uh, sequence from there goes on to where I went into business with a lady in the staffing industry. Uh, and then we sold that out um, from each other and I started out on my own in staffing uh, IT companies. I went public with one company. Uh, after going public with that company, I took a little sabbatical of about three months <laughs> and then started up again and started the um, current business that I'm in now that's well over 20 years. They are cut from the exact same cloth. They are driven, driven powerhouse women, strong-willed, strong-willed. <laughs> Uh, my mom taught me independence. Tracy taught me how to stick up for myself. She rode horses, she raised goats, she was on a farm. She, she did all those kind of things. She played uh, powder puff football when she's in high school and, and so forth. She really never, she never had a broken bone. No, there were never any issues uh, with health with her, none. As she was older and she already had both her children, um, complications started showing up. Uh, with the intestines and stuff, and they started doing these quick surgeries and stuff, and she had multiple, multiple surgeries to try to correct the issue. And it was probably diabetic all along, and nobody found it. She was extremely involved, and um, there was a season of her life where she loved it. I just think that um, the illness, it just took so much away. Tracy was her sugar fluctuated a lot, very high, very low. She she got in a lot of situations where where it would be so so high or so so low, and what you think is even harder when because she couldn't maintain it as well as Carol maintains it a lot better. When I ended up becoming diabetic, first call I made was Tracy. What do I do here? So she comes over at night and we lay everything out. We go through it, what it is, how to do it. Diabetes is tough because I think it's such a silent disease before it gets figured out. And then once it got diagnosed, then you're dealing with all of the, you know, the needle sticks. The, I mean, in, in your everyday life. And I mean, I, I honestly don't know how anybody does it. Oh, well, I've got to watch my blood sugar here. I got to make sure I eat on time, or I have to get something right away to help me, or I need to go to the hospital. Those are fears you live with every day. You're always asking, what's your blood sugar at? What's your blood sugar at, you know? But impact isn't just physical, it's also emotional. Yeah. And I think that's why this is a difficult conversation. She had been up and down all night, not feeling well, blood sugar's wacky. He got up around 5, 5.30 in the morning to go to work. He says, I'll stay home with you. He says, oh, it's just one of those days. Well, it'll all be fine. It's you know, it'll get straightened out. I've got this, 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 and normally it it did straighten out in time. Um, and then he got to work within a half hour, and he called back, and there was no answer. So he thought she's in the restroom. And then uh, he called back another five minutes later. She didn't answer. He left work. He got home. She was comatose when he got home. Took her to the hospital and. Uh, did everything they could. She lived 40 hours. As a 30-something granddaughter, I'm 
I worry, you know, what happens if she's home alone and her blood sugar crashes and there's nobody here to help her. Um, a cure would mean peace and rest and security and knowing that your loved one is more safe. Oh, I can't even imagine. I mean, to think that she would be free of all of that would be almost unbelievable. Yeah, I would say we would really be celebrating if somebody found a cure. Yeah, it would free up so much in any diabetic's life, you know, not to have to worry every day about everything. I have a, a passion for trying to help cure type one. I, I have a passion to see that we can drive it in the right direction. I have a few charities that I do, only a few. This is my major one. JDRF needs the support just so that they can fund the research to develop the new technology that makes life so much easier for everybody else. You know, this is such a life-changing disease that is, you know, so silent for so long before they figure out what people, the people have it. But just the research is gonna help so many people. I think that not everybody can give lots and lots of money, but they can give. And that's what's important. And all the little gives make monumental big gives. And that's where it's gonna work. It isn't the dollar amount, it's the fact that you give and that you, you want to make this work and all of those roll into one big amount. Yeah, it stinks that it doesn't work for us, but it could work for the next one. To give a daughter a chance. To give great kids a chance.